All right, we're ready to begin the South Carolina press conference uh, representing the Gamecocks this afternoon. Our head coach, Don Staley, and student athletes, Malaysia Paul Wiley and Tessa Johnson. Coach, if you would, please make an opening statement. I'm super excited that uh, we got a chance to play in our building. Um, obviously, the energy that our fans inserted into the building really, really um, helped us get out to a, a fast start. And, and other than a small portion in the third quarter, I thought we, we put together uh, and executed a nice uh, game plan. Open it up for questions just for the student athletes at this time. If you would, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. I see Alan, third row, and please introduce yourself as well and your affiliate when you have the microphone. Alan Cole, GamecocksScoop.com. Tessa, I know you had a tough day Friday. Did you feel like maybe you had a breakout coming? And how much did it help you to see that first shot go through to kind of get the ball rolling? Um, I think what actually helped was my teammates telling me to keep shooting and forget everything that happened, no matter if I miss, like just keep shooting and my coaches. Any questions? Go around here to the front. She, she was a plus 49 on Friday, just so y'all know. So although she didn't make a shot, she um, led our, our team in plus minus. Pete. Uh, Pete Yacovelli, Associated Press here in Columbia. Um, for both players, you know, these moments aren't supposed to be, are supposed to be too big for freshmen like yourselves who are, who are here uh, starting out. How do you overcome that? And, and does it even matter what people think as to how you perform? Tessa, would you take that first? Um, I think again, like I keep saying it, just our teammates, they keep encouraging us no matter what, like just play us. Like no matter, no matter what, just keep playing our game, no matter if we're freshmen or not. Malaysia? Um, I think this team, we do a great job of just playing for each other. I think we don't play for the fan, I mean, for the fans and all the other extra stuff. I think everything we do out there on the court is for each other. So, Other questions for the student athletes? Let's go to the third row. Andy Cote, Gamecock Central. Malaysia, you were just all over the place, offense, defense. Just tell me a little bit about all your game plan today and what you want to get going into the game. Um, when I step on the court, I, my main focus um, is usually defense. So once I'm playing great defense and I get good steals, I feel like my offense usually flows and just comes to me. So I was just excited I was out there. I, was, I got to be out there and just get some stops on the defensive side and do some great things on the offensive side as well. Let's go to Chapel. Hey, Chapel Fowler with the state for both players. Uh, Pal mentioned yesterday that y'all felt like in the UNC game in November they kind of were physical and more energetic from the punch. How important was it to set a tone immediately with the full court pressing and what y'all did uh, in that first quarter specifically? Malaysia, you want to take that? Um, <clears throat> I feel like we just came out there being very aggressive, just matching their energy. Last time, I feel like they caught us a little off guard with their aggressiveness. And I feel like today, we did a great job just matching that energy on both sides of the basketball for the whole four quarters. So we did great. Tessa? Um, I agree. And I, we really emphasized on defensive possessions mainly. And then, like Lay said, it will flow into our offense. Other questions? Let's come back around. <clears throat> hey, for both of you again, what does it feel like going to the Sweet 16? Not everybody gets this chance. Tessa? I mean, growing up, I was always like, Wow, I want to play in that NCAA tournament. So being here, like, it's amazing. I don't, I can't like express my feelings, but it's amazing. Same. <laughs> word for word. <laughs> Any other questions? We do have one on Zoom. Uh, Brad Lake. Brad. Yes, hi ladies, it's Brad from WNBA Swift. Can you speak of your success under the boards today? You guys had 54 rebounds. What led you to have that advantage, especially on the defense? Malaysia would take that first. Um, I feel like we definitely emphasized just boxing out and crashing the boards. I feel like we did a great job with just boxing out. And if we, the person who did who boxed out, who didn't get a rebound, the other man, it was able to open up the floor for us to get rebounds. So just all the small thing intangibles really helped us get the rebounds and 54 rebounds, which is kind of crazy. I didn't know. Tessa? I mean, she said it, but one of our keys to the game was 
boxing out and rebounding. And comparing to last game, they got a lot of second chances. So we had to, again, emphasize it and do our job. Seeing no further questions, y'all can go back to the locker room. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. <laughs> Open up for co questions for Coach Jay. Staley at this point. Please raise your hand. We've got Alan. Referee. Was that first half the best you've seen this team play all year? And if not, does anything else come to mind you could even compare it to? Um, I don't know. We haven't played like that in a, in a super long time. And we we actually were talking about that in, in the coaches' locker room. Like, we haven't played well all together. Like, every, every single one of our players made an impact coming into the game. And we needed a, a performance like this. And hopefully uh, this – um, playing this good of a basketball can be contagious um, throughout the rest of the way. I mean, I mean, I, I, I thought we did a great job of just being aggressive um, on both sides of the basketball, just locking in uh, to make sure that this wouldn't be our last game. Pete. Hey, Don. Um I know a few years ago, you know, we had Aaliyah and Zion, you know, regular, uh, to talk to them when they were freshmen. But how unusual is it that, you know, it's freshmen who are kind of pushing things and leading the way these past few games? Uh, I, I think it's the theme of women's basketball at this point, where you got a lot of young players who are coming in and making an impact. I mean, they, they grew up watching the NCAA tournament. They grew up watching the WNBA. So to to get their opportunity to play on a big stage, they've prepared themselves for it. And, I mean, it's, it's the right situation. I mean, all the freshmen, like all the freshmen that are, you know, that are, um, that are in the national spotlight, um, they pick good situations in which they can, they can shine. And although this is a different kind of shine for Malaysia and Tessa, um, even Chloe, um, they they see themselves as being integral parts of our uh, of our success, and they they didn't back down from it. Like they could have easily. They didn't look like this in in June. They they built up to it, and um, they don't have to be receptive to it as well. But um, I think just the whole group, the whole entire group, allows them to just play their game, and 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 be held accountable for not playing their game. So I think it's a cool dynamic to, to our team. Other questions? Go on the fourth over there. Yeah. Right there. Dawn, you've talked um, about Malaysia's progression just all season. What did you see from her today and her experience and maturity and just really just how she was playing all around? Well, I, I think with Malaysia, you know, one, she didn't want to have the type of performance that she had the first time that we played. So I think she has something to prove to herself um, and something to prove to the game. I mean, I think she's wired that way. Um, Malaysia's super smart. Like, some of the stuff she does out there, like, you know, I, I thought her passing up an opportunity to, to go score, to give it to, to Breezy so, so Breezy can see the ball go in. Like, that little type stuff um, is – incredibly like like she's aware she's aware of situations that you really don't think her young mind is really thinking about and then she and she performs the way she does like she's not afraid of the moment no matter if she's playing well or not she's not afraid to make mistakes she doesn't like to look bad but she's unafraid to make mistakes and um and, and for that we are you know we are we are honored that she chose to to make the mistakes and correct them um, on on Gamecock ground. Other questions for Coach? Let's go to Chapel. Hey, Don, when you're up by that many points, especially in a fourth quarter, what's kind of the balance between wanting to stay engaged and maybe not pushing too hard or feeling like you're running up anything but also keeping the team engaged and kind of – Yeah. You know. I, mean, I mean, at this point, we, we want to we play good basketball. Like, I, I didn't, you know, we didn't want to run up the score, but we certainly did not want to let our foot off the gas because it's hard, you know. It's hard to to lose momentum and to gain it back 
Um, so, no, we, we were just trying to execute. Because it wasn't, it was a different set of players out there that's trying to execute. So they have to utilize the time that they that they get just in case we need them in that in a situation where they need to they need to play on both sides of the basketball and execute what we need to execute. So it isn't it isn't really about the score. It's about how it looks and what we're doing to 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 stay productive. Other questions for coach? Don, how aware were the players of, you know, the narrative, the tough narrative that NC St or North Carolina gave you the last couple of games, and they wanted to make sure that they got a working lead and kept on building. Super important. I, I think they, you know, we we watched we watched some of the clips of that game and and saw how physical things were, and I mean, I don't, I don't think we handled them well. Um, I thought they they out aggressive us and um they didn't want that to happen no matter how it looked no matter how it you know whether we were efficient or not um they did not want it to to look the way that that or perform the way that they performed so I, I thought I thought the officiating was was great actually just to, to be able to allow both teams to play physical but yet if it got a little bit out of hand they they were in control of it they were ahead of everything and they were communicative, and I, I really appreciate that that part of it. Go back to Chapel. Don, what'd you like from Camilla today, and do you feel like she handled kind of the one game absence well and was kind of back into usual form? Um, yeah, I mean Camilla had a hard time with it, to be quite honest. Like um, she felt like she let her team down, um, and she's almost embarrassed by not being able to play. And no, no, no matter how much we tried to get shake her out of it, only basketball, only getting back out there and running up and down and hearing the ovation from, from the crowd. Even got her a little emotional at the beginning of the game. Um, she is a uh, – I mean, I mean, she's a uh, – you know, she's, she's a kind-hearted person, and it was so much unlike her. Um, so I, I'm happy that she got over – that part of it and now we can move on and we'll be at a, a neutral site and she can just kind of focus in on um, what she needs to do to help us continue to win. Any other questions from the room for coach? If not, we do have a couple questions on Zoom. Uh, Brad Lake. Yes, hi coach. Congratulations on the win. Can you speak to the dynamic of your bench? You had 51 bench points today and how important you feel that your bench will be contributing as you make this deep run? Um, super proud. One of, the, one, of the, um, one of our keys is always bench production. Um, the amount of you know, rebounds and points that they can accumulate as well as just being able to hold serve defensively and what we want to do. Like I have the utmost confidence in our bench. Um, we've put them in a position to play all season long. So what they're doing right now is not a surprise. It was, it was built that way uh, from the very beginning, and now they're seeing um, just some of their their patience pay off in a big way. And question from Gabriella Lewis. Hi, Coach. Um, talking about SEC or SEC defense, you have the best SEC defense in the country. Um, why is it, you know, a lot of teams in the SEC rest their laurels on defense? Why do you think the SEC has built this culture around defense? And then what's distinctive about SEC defense? Um, I mean, it's, 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 our, it's the fabric of who we are as a, as a conference. We know, that, we know that from time to time you're, you're – your offense is going to fail you at some point because the defense is so good that, you know, you either have to make it an emphasis to, to, to defend or else you're going to have a lot of lopsided scores um, because, our you know, our coaches are pretty darn savvy, pretty. They come up with some um, incredible schemes defensively just to, you know, just to, just to throw us off balance. And I, I do think, and I've said this, for a very long time, even before we won our national championship, the SEC prepares you to to, to win national championships um, with 
with with how we how we guard, um, with our ability to score because we know we're being if you're if you're able to score against the SEC, you're doing something pretty good. You're pretty disciplined to um, um, work in your offense because you're you're not going to always get your first or second option. So you got to be super disciplined to to stay in the course offensively. Um, so I'm I'm. I'm happy that I, I get a chance to work in the SEC because it puts us in a position to, to advance at least to the Sweet 16. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you all. Both locker rooms remain open until 335. It's about 15 minutes, roughly.